no eating anything for seven days i'm only drinking water welcome to my seven day water fast so this is my fourth time doing it and i've been doing it for the last three years there are a lot of health benefits when it comes to fasting like autophagy getting rid of those toxins out of your body and um, allowing your body a break from just like eating and constantly like breaking down food for you but my favorite uh, benefit is like clearing of your skin it's like freaking crazy soft the first time i ever did it i did it for five days and it seemed super impossible i thought i was gonna die i did so much research on it as i was fasting because i was afraid of dying first few days were really rough but as soon as i got to day four it got a lot easier and my skin was freaking amazing so i grew up with acne because of genetics um and i had acne all over my face as a teenager and it was not pretty my skin was just not great it was rough but as soon as i got to day four of fasting when i woke up that morning i went to go wash my face and my skin felt incredibly soft it was so smooth and soft i couldn't believe it like i was feeling my face and it was just like this is freaking crazy also the obvious health benefit when it comes to fasting is losing weight but it's not a permanent solution. Just FYI, like I share this with my parents and they think it's like what I do just to like lose weight permanently. But no, it's like on it's based on your consistent everyday diet. And I know because I lost a lot of weight, like and I kept it off. But this isn't like only to lose weight, I would say. Like it's more of like keeping my body i guess healthy or resetting my body like for the new year and i think it's a great like option to have when it comes to being healthy if you do want to lose weight though i would say this isn't a permanent solution you would need something more consistent like intermittent fasting for instance which is what I do more consistently. Because you do gain back the weight after fasting. Like not all of it, but you gain... I'll probably like regain half of it. Um, sometimes most of it. it just depends on my diet. Um, and that's fine with me. But it's not a permanent solution. If you're thinking like, oh, I can fast. I'll lose all the weight. And then like keep that off. That's not going to happen. That's not realistic. Because if you don't change your diet... Or like how, how much of you eat something or like when you eat something that or like for how long you eat something that that plays into a factor of like keeping weight off this is all from my personal experience by the way like and what I've learned this isn't like professional health advice because I'm not but I have lost weight so yeah I'm sharing what my experience is like the hardest thing when it comes to fasting is, is literally just like not eating when you want to. Like I know there's like there's gonna be like hunger pains and like like mood swings maybe or even like fatigue lightheadedness, which is what I've experienced usually within the first three days. But after that, like I felt amazing. Like I felt like the, like I didn't have an appetite for food and like that's when autophagy kicks in and like the other health benefits like you'll see the difference and you'll feel the difference honestly i watch mukbangs when i'm fasting because i just can't eat it i want to eat it and i know it's good so i live vicariously through the mukbangers who can you know enjoy their food also it's very difficult when you smell food because like that's when your stomach gets growling at least for me one time i was like on my second to the last day of fasting and i'd gone to the movies you know thinking it's an activity i can do that doesn't require food but as soon as i like or we were watching the movie in the theater i smelled popcorn and my stomach was like growling 
that was literally the hardest and I had to like push through that but when it comes to like seeing food and like just watching I'm totally okay and like I do salivate but like it's it's something I can like handle but smelling is like another story it also like made me appreciate like having food because before I ever fasted I would just immediately wake up in the morning and like first thing I do is like head to the the fridge I hadn't realized that that was a habit of mine and then the lack of food made me wanted more food especially the first few days so it made me appreciate having food in my life a lot more and also because I'm a foodie like you know like I love food so not having it is like killing me and over the last few attempts I've done I've hit other milestones like six days six days and 15 hours and now I'm gonna aim for seven days if I don't notice a significant difference by the seventh day then I'm gonna wind back to five days next year just because like I think that's a good sweet spot a lot of people think I'm crazy when I tell them this but it's not that I like it but it's more of it keeps me disciplined and appreciated of food every year um and it, it's a nice reset here's my process when it comes to fasting so you don't go straight into fasting because you don't want to shock your body so what I do is I spend about a week in keto to push my body into ketosis to burn fat and it's a good slow transition into fasting instead of completely restricting your entire body of everything so there's keto which is high fat low carb some protein then i don't consume any sugar and no caffeine so that's about a week and then in i'll go into fasting and then to get out of fasting or break my fast i'll start eating keto again for about another week that way like when you first consume food again you don't want to shock your body the first meal i'll ever eat to break my fast is chicken broth i did a lot of research that i could on this and chicken broth is like a good choice when it comes to uh, easing your stomach back into like eating again so it's like liquid, it has a lot of sodium, uh, which you can get regain your electrolytes and some protein for that. And then I'll move into like cooked vegetables instead of like raw vegetables because that's a bit harder on your digestive system to digest. Uh, and so yeah, I'll have that cooked and then slowly move back into like other food groups. So my last meal was yesterday actually and I finished it at 7.45 p.m. Uh, and it was ramen but I didn't eat the noodles. So it was mostly like broth and like I had chashu uh, and then the veggies that came with it and then like a side salad. So I think that was a pretty good like keto meal. Uh, in the morning I also had like avocado with eggs. So avocado is a really good source of like healthy fats. Uh, which would like help me push my body more into ketosis. Oh, and FYI, when I order the ramen, I order the noodles to be on the side so that I could take them home and then give it to one of my friends. So there's no food waste here. I already finished day one since it's already 8.15 p.m. Uh, I wasn't hungry at all today, but I know day two and day three are like the more tougher times to get pack to get through tomorrow i have work so i'm hoping work will keep me not thinking about food and focus on just like work so that yeah i can push through and i will continue to record my process each day uh, so you guys can see the whole process Hey guys, I'm about to complete day two. It's almost 7.45 and I'll be moving on to day three. In the morning, it felt pretty good. Like I wasn't hungry or I didn't have much symptoms. It felt like as day one. 
but towards the end of the day I got a little nauseous and then I had a headache I don't know if that's like stress from work but I think that might have contributed contributed to it yeah parts of me is like I don't know how I'm gonna do this like but I've done it before in the past and I know day two and day three are like the toughest ones to surpass and it sucks when like you have family members cooking in the kitchen and you can just smell it and I want it but I can't and I had to go to the kitchen and grab some scissors and my mom was like cooking something I had to hold in my breath because I just I just didn't want to be tempted I really don't want to like break my fast I think what really helped me not think about food so much it was working a lot well I'm actually working a lot more than usual so that really I was really focused and that just made me not think about food so much so it's the end of day three and the only thing is that I feel maybe a bit lightheaded, but I don't know if that's from like stress from work or maybe I'm just not drinking enough water for this fast. But earlier today, I went to the grocery store to buy chicken broth and chicken soup to break my fast. I bought it ahead of time, even though my fast won't end for like another four days, just because I feel like I might be lazy towards the end of it so I'd rather just prepare now than later overall I'm feeling pretty okay um had some like hunger pains a little bit here and there but you know I just gotta push through I have been watching like mukbangs and like it's really tempting I really miss food right now I don't know why but I'm like craving like chamoy candy like I've been like googling like how to make it and like or like how much they cost online to buy it so interesting how like my cravings will vary and I also went out earlier today to do some errands just to get myself out of the house and like do some light cardio to just make myself feel better yeah, that's the end of day three, and now I am on day four. It should be easier now, because based on my past experience, usually day four and after has been pretty good. Like, I have no appetite for food. Uh, I'm not, like, tempted or anything like that. Like, I feel pretty great overall. Um, but we'll see. You never know what might happen. Good morning, it is day four of my fast and I just showered, um, my hair's frizzy, whatever, uh, and my skin is like feeling really good, really smooth and soft. The only thing is that I've been noticed I've been getting heart palpitations over the last few days. I've noticed this symptom, I guess, over, like the past few times I've also done it. I finally looked into it and it's because because I'm not eating uh, my blood sugar is really low anytime you lower your caloric intake it can lower your blood sugar levels which cause heart palpitations I also read that it's a hormonal response to your body metabolizing your en energy reserves which is like the fat in your body and it increases your metabolic activity to maintain those glucose levels. I also read that taking vitamin B12 can counteract the heart palpitations. So I've been taking these vitamin B complex supplements and it, com it comes with vitamin C as well. And then I've also been taking these electrolyte capsules. These are sugar-free and great to... Uh, replenish your body of electrolytes which is lacking when you are fasting or when you're just like not drinking enough water like you're de dehydrated I am drinking water though I'm trying to drink as much water as I can so that I don't get dehydrated but this also comes with vitamin d in the back uh, which is also 
a supplement that you may need because all these supplement recommendations have been by doc Dr. Eric Berg, who I follow on YouTube about uh, prolonged fasting. I was doing so much research about fasting, especially the first time I did it. Um, and I finally decided to take vitamins this time. So maybe that's why I'm not feeling like super intense hunger pains as I did have in the past. And my symptoms are a lot lighter than they have been in the past. Um, but I think this fasting round has been a lot better than it has been in the past I've done it. So I'm definitely going to continue taking my vitamins in my future fastings as well. Because these have been great and the symptoms aren't as severe as they have been in the past I've done it. Okay, let's talk about my weight and how it has fallen over the course of this fasting period. So as I mentioned previously, I start with keto first so that I don't shock my body going into the fast. So that started on January 8th, and at that point, I was 130.7 pounds. I would say I was bloated then. Usually, I weigh around probably 127 pounds. So I think that three pound difference is water weight from just bloating of like eating so many carbs. Because the night before, I had eaten a shit ton of carbs probably because I knew I was going on a fast and I just was on vacation with my friends. So the day before my fast, I had so much carbs. Let's see, I ate for breakfast, I ate like a, a cheese roll. For lunch, I had like mee goreng. And then for dinner, I had some like rice noodles at home. Like my body would just wanted carbs, probably because I was like hungover. <laughs> So yeah, that's why I was super bloated and weighed more than I normally am the day I started my fast, which was 130.7 pounds. And then the next day, I finally de-bloated at 128.1 pounds. And then at the end of my keto, which was January 14th, I weighed 124.1 pounds. So during my keto period, I lost about 3 to 4 pounds. Considering I don't know what my average weight is without being bloated. So if, it, if we're taking it from 128, then I would lost 4 pounds. But I would say normally I'm 127. Uh, and that would be about 3 pounds during keto. And then the next day for my first day of fasting, I was 125.1 pounds. So about a pound up from the day before because... I was bloated from so much sodium. I had ramen the night before, minus the noodles. So day one of fasting, I was 125.1 pounds. And now, I just weighed myself this morning, I am 119.9 pounds. So if you do the math, it's 5.2 pounds. But realistically, because I was bloated the my first day, I would take it from the 124.1 pounds. So that would be 4.2 pounds realistically. So from my first day of keto to where I am right now at day four of fasting, I lost 10.8 pounds if you're thinking just purely math. But I think more realistically, considering like the context of like me being bloated and everything, I think I lost roughly around 8.2 pounds. I can't stop touching my face because it's so soft and so smooth. But it's like not a like giant difference compared to when I first did it. Because when I first did it, it was a, such a drastic change. Like even my manager at the time, or well, she's still my manager, but at, when we met in person for the first of them she said my complexion was amazing like it's crazy how much like junk or or just toxins are in our food and, that, and it can affect our like body so much like i was freaking glowing man but it's, it's still nice to have soft skin i really like it 
my parents think I'm crazy for doing this, but I've done it in the past. Now they've gotten, I guess, used to it. But the first time I did it, I was fasting for five days and they thought like I was going to die. My dad was worried. Like he said, you should just eat something just like a little bit. So you're like, you don't die. But I'm, I know I wasn't going to die. And I've done a ton of research on this stuff. But I went outside into the living room. My mom's uh, not working today. She asked me, like, how long am I fasting for? Five or six days? Because that's how much I did in the past. I told her seven. And then she was like, oh my god, is that even healthy? I'm like, yeah, it's totally fine. But I don't think they, like, they're, they really believe me. You know, I know, like, monks can fast for, like, maybe 100 days. And other religions will fast. I should just, like help reference jesus because they're catholic and be like jesus fasted for 42 days so like i should be fine <laughs> you know it made me think about like how in this lifetime people are always going to call you crazy or like whatever you know i don't want that to stop me from doing what i want and how i want to live my life so i'm just gonna ignore it they call you crazy or insane or whatever just because that's their projection on you. They probably don't think they can do it themselves or that it's out of the norm for them. Like, but what is norm, you know? What's normal? I say live life how you want because you only live once and just do it the way that you want. Don't let other people stop you. It is day five and my skin is like super soft and smooth right now. So usually during my fasting period, I'll usually lock myself in my room just to avoid like temptation of going to the kitchen and like smelling all the food and seeing it. And I'll avoid going outside also to avoid getting tempted by food, especially socializing, socializing with my friends. Like that's usually around food as well but instead of like 100% locking myself in my room which I'm totally fine with because I'm an introvert what I what I did today was just go out do some errands and treat myself to a little bit of self-care so after my errands I got my eyebrows threaded and then I went to go get a much needed massage because I've been so stressed with work and I tense up because of it and then I went to go buy dried persimmons from this nice Vietnamese lady because I've been craving like persimmons throughout the entire season actually and I haven't had a chance to go get it and then she, I saw that she was selling it so I was like why not pick some up I'm not gonna eat it I just I'm saving it until after my fast and keto I got two more days to go and I'm hanging in there. Fasting this time has definitely been easier than compared to the past times I've done it. And I think that's because I started out with a healthy keto. The year before I did dirty keto and that was horrible because I threw up. And then the first time that I ever did it, I had a cookie the day before my fast and I just ended up with a lot of headaches. Um, and that was not pretty. So because I did the healthy keto, I've noticed I didn't throw up. I wasn't as nauseous as I have been in the past. Um, I didn't get headaches like at all. I'm just more like fatigue and like the hunger pains have like definitely reduced and not as intense as in the past. So definitely not bad at all it's been pretty or relatively pretty easy i mean it's still hard overall and i've definitely been hungry i've been watching like mukbangs like every single day every single hour just because i want to live vicariously through them oh and after my massage they offer these fortune cookies and i couldn't say no even though i'm fasting but I just couldn't say no because they're free. So I'm going to eat this after my fast and keto. So I will save this. Also, what has helped me not think about food was just doing my fast during the work week. And just spending my spare time like editing videos like this one. 
because in the past I would binge movies or TV shows and I think I noticed I have the habit of associating food with TV or movie shows like just because like you for instance you go to the movies and like you're always like snacking on stuff while you're watching or like I've always like ate food while watching shows or movies so yeah definitely working or doing other things can definitely help distract your mind from thinking about food it is ironic though that i watch mukbangs because it's literally people eating food maybe it works because i live vicariously through them but I do salivate when I'm watching it, so I don't know why I'm torturing myself. Other benefits to fasting is that you get to reset your insulin levels. So before I had ever fasted, I had an A1C level of I think 6.2 or 6.3, which indicated that I was pre-diabetic. But after I had done the fast, I got my blood test and my A1C is now at 4.9%. Because of fasting, I was able to drop my A1C levels by 1.3, 1.4%. I think the lowest you can go is 4.8%. And I've tried last year trying to hit that. Even though I was like 4.9, 0.1% away, it's not much of a difference. But I just wanted to try for it, but I didn't, which is whatever. But the fact that I was able to drop that much drastically and below 5.7%, like, that was crazy to me. And I'm so glad I did it. Also, what happens post-fast is that you'll notice your taste buds uh, become more sensitive. It's as if they've resetted. So you'll notice that things will be a lot more saltier, sweeter, sour. So that may mean you may need more salt, more sugar, more spice in order to taste the same levels that you're used to. I have some members in my family who I know their taste buds are hella desensitized. And like to me, eating their food is like too much for me. But... For them, they think I, I eat bland. I'm like, no, I don't eat bland. You're just hella desensitized in terms of taste buds. So fasting is a great way to reset your insulin levels as well as your taste buds. It is day six. And the past few days, I've noticed that I've been able to focus more on my work, like editing videos. I think I was working like six to eight hours straight with barely any distractions and... I haven't felt that in like a long time. Usually I have difficulty focusing and concentrating, but this time I had no problem and I felt like my mind was very like clear and it wasn't like foggy at all. And then later in the day, which was like an hour ago, I felt so hungry. I My stomach was like growling. So I chugged water just to fill my stomach up and hopefully the hunger would pass and it has passed but now i'm salivating and i want food i just have one more day so i'm almost there and i'm hanging in good morning i have successfully completed seven days of fasting i completed a full seven days as of yesterday at 7.45 p.m. on January 21st. So today is technically the eighth day because I'm breaking my fast in, let's see, about three hours. So I decided to push it to this afternoon because I wasn't where I wanted to be in terms of my weight. I had plateau from Sunday to Saturday. I was about 118.6. I think six. So, and I was expecting to be at like 117, but because it plateaued, I was like, okay, maybe I can push it like one extra day or at least overnight. Also, I realized that if I break my fast in the evening, I'd just be opening the floodgates to like my hunger 
and I would just be probably hungry throughout the night and that would mess with my sleep. So I didn't want that happening. I just weighed myself and I am at 116.6 pounds. I think I might have plateaued yesterday just because I had chugged water and I had taken my vitamins. So maybe that might have caused my weight to go up, like water weight a little bit. But I'm glad that I am at 116 because that was a surprise for me. I was expecting to be at 117. I'm going to break my fast at noon, which would make it seven full days, 16 hours and 15 minutes of my water fast. And that is a whole new record. And I'm so proud of myself. Every time I do this, I think it's like impossible and just crazy in my head that I can do it, but it's all taking it day by day. So this time around, I aim for seven full days of my water fast because I wanted to see if there was any significant difference between five and seven days. And my conclusion is there wasn't any difference. So next year when I do this again, I'm just going to aim for five days. Why do I need to torture myself anymore? So when I first started keto, I was 130.1 pounds. But I think on my first day of keto, I was bloated. So I would say I was probably about 128.1 pounds. And subtract 116.6 pounds, I have lost... I think realistically 11.4 pounds in the past when i mentioned to my friends that i do a water fast they think i'm crazy and they think it's like for weight loss management but when i tell them it's not they think like what's the point of even doing it then but to me it's not about like weight loss management at all it's it's about i mean like some a little bit yes but as soon as you start eating you're gonna eat back the weight anyways but for me, it's about the health benefits that come with it, which is like autophagy, resetting your insulin levels, which by the way, I have dropped my A1C. Before I had ever lost weight, when I was like 152.1 pounds, I think, I had an A1C of I think 6.2 or 6.3%, which meant I was pre-diabetic. And I think last year when I measured my blood test, I was, or even like right afterwards um, for my checkup, I had dropped it down, I think by 1.4%. So my A1C has been consistent at 4.9%, which means I'm no longer diabetic. Uh, it's, it's dropped the lowest it can go. Technically 4.8 is the lowest. I tried doing it, I tried dropping it to that level, just couldn't, 4.9, but 0.1% isn't much of a difference. Also, I love that my skin feels like so soft and so nice after water fasting. So yeah, water fasting is not a permanent solution to weight loss management. That's in your consistent everyday lifestyle and diet. I reached my goal. It has been 7 days, 16 hours and 15 minutes and now I can finally break my fast. I have chicken broth here and I'm going to break my fast with that. After seven days of not eating, this chicken raw is so good. Warm, salty, so good. Mm. Oh yeah, let the floodgates open. Later today, I will be having a veggie soup, so that will fill me up and I can work my way up to eating normally again. So after a prolonged water fast, you want to break your fast with some chicken broth, something easy on your stomach, and then you want to move into veggies, which, well, boiled veggies, so that it's easier on your digestive system. And then slowly start incorporating the other food groups 
back into your normal diet. I would leave carbs last since we're still doing keto.